Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So I've got a few plants that I want to get out in the garden. However, I don't have a lot of spots to put them yet because I still got some of my winter crops still growing. However, there are a few places that I can start putting them in right around these other plants because they're, they're young still, they're small seedlings. Now granted, they're gonna grow quick over time, but there's enough time in between that from when I'm gonna be harvesting the other stuff and removing them from the garden. I'm gonna take you around, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here and where I'm gonna start putting stuff. So today we are gonna plant a few plants. All right, so the first place is right here. I've got lettuce here that I'm actually gonna harvest today, I'm gonna get rid of. And right in the front here, I can plant two to three tomato plants or pepper plants. In fact, I think pepper is where I'm gonna put here. These are onions and they're already bulbing up quite well. And I've got maybe another, I don't know, maybe a little less than a month, about a month until they're ready. You can see we've got good sized bulbs going on these. They're not quite ready, but they will be fairly soon. If I remove this lettuce here and plant a couple pepper plants right here, uh, they'll have enough time to grow up before I harvest this onion. For now, I'm gonna let these flower. Back here, I've got carrots that are almost ready. We've got a little bit of shoulders showing on some of these, especially these big ones back here, but they're not quite ready. I've got probably another, about three weeks until those are ready. Now these are some radishes that I left in the ground and they bulbed up way too big. In fact, I pulled one already because it fell over. It had started to flower. It fell over and it was kind of ruining these carrots here and it was on top because it's so big. It was on top of this lettuce and you can see the size of these. It almost looks like a beet, size of a radish bulb. I had decided that you can see it was already flowering. Beautiful flowers, by the way. You know, I really wanted to kind of keep it as seed and then kind of collect the seed, but I just don't have the room here to keep it. I need to remove these because it is encroaching in with my carrots and everything and falling over and just kind of damaging everything else. So today we're gonna to remove that. That doesn't mean we can plant here, but pretty soon we will because of these carrots. These are the little ball carrots. I can, I can actually harvest all these. These are ready, this row. So I'll harvest this and this today. That's, that's what I'll do. I've still got this lettuce growing here, which I can grow the lettuce in between the peppers. So this will become the pepper bed. Yeah, the next thing is here. So I've got garlic here. Okay, garlic is not ready. I've still got another month or two until I can harvest the garlic. They're not bulbed up yet. Okay, they're getting nice and big and, and fat, but if you look down, there's just no, no bulb forming yet. So they're not ready, but they will be fairly soon. The problem is I've got straw on top of here and straw has a big possibility of having herbicide in it. Um, persistent herbicide. Blanket term is grazon or um, I think People know it as Roundup is one of the compounds that's similar to that, but that can damage the tomatoes because they're really susceptible. So I'm gonna remove all this today. I'm not gonna plant today here, but I will remove all this mulch here and I'm gonna replace it with some hardwood bark mulch. I'm gonna just take this and toss it. I've actually got a lot of straw right in the back of my property here that is, uh, that I'm just kind of leaving and we'll see if I ever use it. Maybe in a couple years, all that herbicide will be gone and then I can use it as compost. If I can remove all this for now, let rains hit, kind of drain all that out, and it should be okay to plant. Right here, I have already harvested a lot of my carrots. I had succession planted the carrots by about two to three weeks. These were ready, they were nice and large. I recently did a video of me actually harvesting these. So for now, I can put some squash here. I have some winter squash that really needs to get in the ground right now, so I'm gonna put those there. And I'm gonna let that, because the winter squash finds out. I'll put one winter squash here and let that vine out this direction, okay? Out into the yard. And then I'm gonna put a zucchini here and let that grow tall because I, I grow those up on a uh, pie. The zucchini will still get the sun and the winter squash will vine out, okay? So I'll stay lower to the ground. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And then once I harvest all these, then of course I'll do the same thing. I'll put another winter squash over here. I really only should get two in this bed, but I can put a couple zucchini as well or cucumber or something like that that gets tall right here. Right here, I'm gonna harvest this today, getting rid of this. I do have a row of lettuce here and another row of lettuce. These are 
kind of more of a summer variety. And then right here, I've got some cabbage, which I'm gonna be harvesting pretty soon. I have a spot. Once I harvest this, I can get a couple tomato plants, uh, two to three, depending on the, what, what variety I'll, I'll plant them here. This I'm gonna get rid of today, and then I'll be able to get a couple more tomato plants. I'm also gonna be removing this. This was a avocado tree, but this had died back in the, we had bad uh, chill and it killed this off. So today we're gonna remove the avocado. I'm gonna take off all the mulch here. I'm gonna add a little bit more soil and amend this. And then I can put a, this is a 20 gallon. I can put a winter squash here and set it out in front of one of these beds and let that sprawl out as well. That's what I'm doing today. So let's get to it. We'll just go ahead and remove these. I'm gonna keep one of them for now because I wanna bring in, the parasitic wasps love these apparently from what I read. And so that'll bring in the parasitic wasps and hopefully, you know, if I've got at least one um, and I'll take the strongest one. And I might need to stake this to keep it upright. These tomato clips are great. They just make things so much easier. We'll clip that there. and clip there. So that's gonna hold that up, keep that from blowing over and damaging the rest of my plants. And now this is opened up. We can see that there's some carrots here that would have survived, but they got blocked out from the light with that. So remove weeds, but we can keep those carrots in the ground for a little bit longer, see if they do anything, but I don't think we're gonna get much off of those. Worst comes to worse, those will just be fed to the chickens. It'll be more more food. Here's a lettuce from last year, just like those two came from last year, but this didn't get light, so it died off. Now this bed is opened up and we can see better in here. Let's see, which variety is this? This is the Danvers that never really took off. We've got a couple Danvers over there. And we've got a couple over on that bed as well. All right, let's get a lot of this over to the chickens. Chickens are excited. There's a lot of food for them. Watch out, there you go. So it's not all to waste. This turns into eggs for us and compost. All right, next, let's go ahead and, and remove these. I'll bring these inside and I'm just gonna harvest these completely. And what I'm gonna do is just cutting them off at the base, leaving the roots in the ground. These onions will be harvested somewhere around May. We're in the end of March, so about a month, month and a half, and then I can harvest them. Same thing with these. Look at these worms, guys. Nice. That's a good thing. Let's leave those worms. All this wonderful, beneficial stuff growing in here is just awesome. This is an Anaheim. This is a jalapeno, gypsy hybrid, and poblano. Okay, these are all 12 to 18 inch spacing. Now this is a four foot. So I can technically get four in there. So we've got decent root system going on. These are a little small, but if you guys remember, I had some issues with my tomatoes and pepper starts. So they didn't get a whole lot of um, growth, but once I get them into the ground here, I, I believe we're gonna see it really take off. Now I'm gonna amend with some organic fertilizer. First, in the hole, bone meal, and quite a bit. We are gonna do a little blood meal. Kinda kickstart this. We press down to get some good soil contact. I'm gonna take a half a handful of this fertilizer. This is a 624, I believe. We'll scratch that in, right in the surface. And the thing with peppers and tomatoes is you can actually plant the stem deeper. And the deeper the stem, the more roots you got because they will sprout roots from the stem. There's the jalapeno, poblano next, and last but not least, this gypsy hybrid. So we've got our peppers in, and I've got quite a few more peppers that then we can kind of space out. Next, I've got to remove all this mulch. So I'm just gonna throw it into this and then dump it at the back of my property here. And I'm not gonna get all of it I'm gonna try to get the most I can. All right, guys, well, I still got quite a bit here. I mean, I just feel like I'm taking so much dirt with me every time I'm getting this last little bit. And so I wanna leave as much dirt. I mean, 
you know, I'm not sure that this stuff really is contaminated, you know, so I'm not going crazy with it. And in all honesty, it's about quantity of it. So, I mean, plants are going to live if there's a little bit. They're not going to thrive, but they'll live and they'll be all right. Um, but we'll remove a lot of that. I'm going to probably tomorrow or the next day, I, I watered yesterday, but I'll do some heavy watering and really kind of drain this system, um, have it come out the bottom and everything and try to drain it. And hopefully that will that will help start to remove some of that stuff. Um, now, I mean, a lot of it's gonna be there if, if it is, okay? But that'll help. And then in about a week, I can start planting here. So this is what I'm gonna be planting. This is a Queensland blue winter squash that I'm gonna put on the front. I'm not planted this variety before, but it looks really good. The flesh looks, I mean, it's like a, a lot of flesh and it's an orange flesh. We're gonna get that right on the side now these are 36 to 60 inch this is a six foot bed so that's every three feet so i could technically get one right in the center as well or maybe something smaller and have three plants coming out this direction but i don't want to overcrowd it so what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to put in the sturgeon right here and that's going to actually be a catch crop for all these because everything i'm planting here the squash bugs and all that uh, love these right and and all this whole bed so if I put a catch crop to there that's going to kind of keep them away let me get the fertilizer because I want to heavily fertilize this so squashes are some of the most heavy feeders <laughs> out there so when we plant this we want to put a whole lot look at that good root development that is some good looking plants so I'm going to position it so it's because it wants to go this direction so I will position it that direction we will backfill with the soil, push down, get some good soil con uh, contact. Take a big handful of this. In fact, more than what do you think, like a handful and a half. More bone meal, more blood meal. We'll work that in. Now this is another plant that you can actually bury the stem a little bit because they will root on you. So in fact, if you ever get vine borers, what you can do is you can root, you basically cut that branch where the vine borer is, okay, from the thing, and you can actually stick that right in the ground and it'll grow uh, new roots from there. Now this black beauty is looking okay, but it has these leaves that are crinkled, some right, around that but then these new ones look okay all of the squashes summer and winter squash and pumpkins and zucchini and cucumber they're all the same species basically it's all the same plant so what you do for one you can do for the other they all grow about the same so keep that in mind I'm going to pull up a couple of these carrots and put in the nasturgeon here today let's go ahead and remove some of these let's see how they're looking by the way yeah they're just not of good size yet these are the Danvers, they get real fat, so they're not ready. So this nasturgeon, I don't wanna put a whole lot of blood meal in there because I've got carrots so close, okay? And I, that can hurt the carrots in their development of the roots, and I don't wanna do that. Look at that one, that's looking beautiful. So we'll have some good salads here in the next couple days. I recently cut off a bunch of these leaves and I want them to harden for a day or two before I plant them in because I want to plant these, this deep. I want to get it real deep so that way it gets a lot of uh, roots. I'm going to wait till tomorrow or the next day to plant this. Here's the rest of the nasturgeons that I have. I've got six, uh, five more. This one is probably, not, so I got like four more because so I'm probably never going to plant this one. It's not doing well. All the rest are. And there we go. I'm going to find the two areas I'm going to put the tomatoes. In the next couple days, we'll give them a nice kickstart. That is 24 inches apart. I think we're good. And we'll just cover this up. And when we plant the tomatoes right around there, they'll have that fertilizer already starting to break down. We won't have to add much more in the hole. See, that's something I'm trying to work on this year is companion planting and making 
planning out the garden a little better instead of trying to stuff as much as I can in together and a whole bunch of varieties that are too similar together. I'm trying to add flowers and other stuff mixed in throughout that are beneficial for each other. And hopefully I can reduce the pressure of the pests that I had last year. Now, last but not least is to put some liquid fertilizer over top of everything. This fish plant food, I'm telling you, has so many good microbes in it that will actually help break down those other fertilizers a little quicker. So that kind of kickstarts it much faster. It's just really good overall stuff and this is be ready for them immediately. This is water soluble. So they'll be able to start uptaking in the next day or two rather than waiting a month or a couple weeks or whatever. So that fish plant food is a 511. I've shown this many times. Um, it's mostly nitrogen. I want a ton of it. And this is the 01010, so no nitrogen, but all phosphorus and potassium. And this one, that phosphorus and potassium one, is really good for root development. So, and overall health of the plant. So it's really good when you first plant them. Of course, it's called more bloom, so it's really good for when they're blooming as well. We're just going to go ahead and water over top of everything we just planted. So these peppers here. And definitely these squash, they need it. <laughs> Just a little bit on that nasturtium. I don't want to go too much close to those carrots. And then these, we can get a healthy amount of water here. <laughs> we'll go ahead and put it right where the tomatoes will be as well. Now, I am going to get this ready where I had my avocado. Pull out the avocado, because it's done for, guys. It is done for. We're gonna get a couple handfuls of this fertilizer because this soil is pretty spent. This is called a Sherman winter squash. It's basically a Japanese pumpkin, uh, but super delicious. Get that all the way around. I'm gonna come in and mulch this whole thing once this grows up a little bit. This all so far I've done in one day. This is March 23rd, okay? It's Saturday, March 23rd. This is a normal Saturday for me, especially in the spring here. There's a lot to do. We've gotta get beds ready, transfer stuff, harvest stuff. So I make room for other things. So um, this is normal. All right, one other thing I wanna mention is when you plant anything that you're gonna stake, which I am, I'm gonna grow this up. You wanna put the stake in the ground when you first plant. This is the same day that I planted. If you don't, you can damage the root systems once that starts growing out. So another thing that we're doing here come early spring is covering any fruiting plants. These blueberries are still hard, but they're gonna ripen pretty soon. These two blueberry plants, I am afraid that the birds are gonna come in and snatch them. So put up this insect netting and I believe the birds can still probably get through this, but it's, it's gonna be a protective layer against it. So right here, we had a bunch of strawberries that the birds all ate. I mean, there was holes pecked in them, half eaten. And now you can see we've got some good looking strawberries without any damage. And so I'm gonna let a couple of these ripen I might pick today, I might pick tomorrow, but over the course of the next little bit, I'll have these ready because this is protecting against the birds. So today is still the 23rd, the day that I planted these. Literally within an hour or two of planting these, I saw a vine burrower. And I mean, that thing was flying around looking for this. I can't believe it that quick. When we do have a problem with them, we did last year, I am so, surprised at how fast they showed up i mean it was like an hour or two of me planting so i got this one covered i got some insect netting the following day i'm gonna direct sow this variety arkansas traveler this one I, I looked it up it gets about five foot tall i've never grown this one before it's already kind of too late to start the seed inside um, this will give it a faster start and this is, I don't have any slicing tomatoes that are ready. So they're just, they're, they're all the cherries. The only ones that I've got that are actual tomato vines are cherry tomatoes. So 
I am going to plant these here and put the rest of the seeds in. And hopefully we get some good germination. I'm going to take these out and then I'm going to put that other tomato in here. Really simple. We're just going to come in with a knife. Pull off the, the leaves. Any of them that look like I don't want to eat, I won't. And they go to the chickens. Well guys, pretty big harvest. Quite a few leaves. So these are what I'm going to be planting. This is a sun gold that I grew from seed. It's the only one that made it and it's actually doing quite well. You guys remember I cut off the leaves here at the base because I'm going to bury it quite deep like up to about right there. And then I recently bought these. I was at Home Depot grabbing something. I saw these, okay, and they were like $2.90. And there you go, $2.98. And this is a super sweet 100. It's another cherry. Um, so I'll put those side by side right here. Go ahead and dig the holes. I want to get them as deep as I possibly can. We are going to add some granule fertilizers. Unfortunately, I didn't press film. So we got that one in the ground. That's a super sweet 100. Now for the sun gold. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Thought I was recording here. And look at that, we got some pretty good root development, considering this had such a slow start. Now, that is not gonna be deep enough. See how deep we can get this. Well, the first leaf is right here. I wanted to get it up buried that deep, but that's as this is as deep as I could get it. I couldn't get any deeper because we were already almost all the way down into the regular soil by the time we were digging. So here's my row of peppers that I planted yesterday. Right here is another row that I'm going to put some more peppers. I've got some cilantro there that I'll probably be harvesting in the next couple days because it's going to bolt on me. I've got two kinds. I got a red cherry sweet like we've been doing. So here's the jalapeno. This is a black beauty. This is your common zucchini, just what you're used to seeing in the grocery store is zucchini. Uh, very similar. The black beauty is just an heirloom variety. Uh, this is the sunburst summer squash. They're, they're really interesting looking. They're a squatty, wide looking summer squash. Uh, these ones are yellow and then I've got the white bush scallop which is also the same shape but it's white and then I've got an eight ball zucchini so the eight ball it's like a zucchini only they're round rather than long but I am gonna put a stake here and then I will connect this to the stake and it'll keep it growing upright because that's how I'm gonna grow these so we'll get these all on the ground one week later so today is March 30th. Everything's looking great, guys. Tomatoes are looking good, bushing out, getting healthy. I've actually got the start of flowers on this one already, which I'm probably going to pick. I want it to focus on growing. Right now, I'm not going to allow that to flower. I'll pull those off. So all the spring stuff is doing really well. Now, probably the worst of it is going to be this guy right here. So I think this cloth, in, we had some wind. It was banging up against it. And... I think it kind of shredded some of these, but the new stuff here is looking really good. So there's really no problem with that. And this thing, I mean, they just grow so fast. You can see the size of this just doubled. The nasturgeon added a bunch of leaves. Boy, you can see how fast these grow. Take a look at that. These are all new leaves, this, this, and this. So the peppers, they're kind of lumping along. The peppers are slow growing. I mean, they're not really fast but they're all doing well. A bug came in, you can see there's some holes on that one. And then this one, it ate this leaf off. So a bug came in and messed with it. So that's a jalapeno. That's the red cherry sweet. Both of those kind of got eaten a little bit. I had added those after these, but all these look okay. And they'll take off pretty soon here. They really, you know, peppers get shock, transplant shock really easily. So these are also doing pretty good. I did have an issue. We had a lot of wind that came through. And when I kind of put these up here, it snapped off part of these leaves. And so as you can see, that leaf is dying. This one got all kind of messed up as well. And the same thing for all these, they all kind of lost a little bit. 
Um, but the brand new leaves are looking healthy and, and good. And again, that's transplant shock too. I mean, that happens a lot. They're going from being inside in, you know, perfect temperature, 73 degrees, always getting, you know, the, the sun's not too bright on them and stuff, and they come outside. The roots get disturbed and they get a little bit of shock, but they come back quickly. You can see all the new growth here on this and look at that, that there are so many little flower starts here. I've been trying to keep this area moist, so I come in and, and water this with the hose most every day, just so that way these seedlings sprout up, but they haven't yet, but they will. I will say I've only got a couple more days until I harvest all these cabbage. So I'm gonna open this up and I'll be able to get maybe another row of tomatoes here. I actually have a couple seedlings uh, that I had started a couple weeks ago, now finally emerging. So maybe in another couple weeks, I'll be able to get a couple more tomatoes in here. Look at all these flowers. So this is flowering out for me now. Um, so this is gonna be bringing a lot of beneficial insects in. Uh, hopefully some that eat some of the not good insects. <laughs> and that's the hope there. Uh, but the carrots I'll probably harvest soon and that'll open up this bed to be able to put more peppers in. Um, I can even at the back of here put some zucchini or tomato. Because, uh, I mean, really in reality, I don't need that many peppers. I don't, I don't eat a ton of peppers. I like putting poblanos on the grill. But when it comes to uh, like sweet peppers, or even really really hot peppers like you know i'm just i'm not it's not something i eat a, a lot but i do like having some peppers I, like i said i make a fermented hot sauce that i like a lot and that's with the uh, anaheims and then i eat the poblanos and then sometimes we chop up some sweet pepper and put it on stuff but it's not a lot it's just not but everything's looking really good this will be on another video but the other day i came in and i planted all the Cucumbers, so this is going to be a cucumber trellis. They've only been in the pot here for two days, so still kind of in that shock mode, but they'll be growing up this and we'll have a lot of cucumbers come soon. So I believe that was everything. Thanks for watching. I know it was a long video, but I just really want to show you guys everything that was going on in the garden for spring. And this is not everything. In fact, there's a lot of other stuff that I was doing, but it's kind of the main stuff is the tomatoes, the peppers, zucchini, what I'm, you know, taking out stuff and having to make room for stuff uh i mean it's just there's a lot to do and you know still have more that i'm i'm working on but hope you guys enjoyed the really long video <laughs> if you guys have any recommendations or suggestions or questions please leave them in the comment section below well thanks for watching everyone i will see you guys in the next video now you guys try to escape the daily grind